It has been a big week for Microsoft Flight Simulator with the Nordic World Update, the PMDG, DC6 and a bunch of other really exciting bits of news being released about the Xbox version, but this is the thing that caught my eye. Turtle Beach Velocity 1, a universal flight control system for the Xbox Series X, S and Xbox One and of course PC. My goodness, is this exciting, let's talk about it. Hope you enjoyed that new intro here guys, as you can see my channel is going through a rebrand. If you've got any suggestions, please be sure to put them down in the comments. I'm overhauling almost every single aspect of my channel, including new channel memberships. One tier now with loads of perks for a very good price. But anyway, that's not what you came for. Let's talk about Turtle Beach's first entry into the float sim market. First of all, there's a 30 second trailer, so I'm going to play that so you guys can get a feel for it. And then I'll talk about what I see and what I'm excited for. Transponder. Altitude. Trim. Set for takeoff. Tower Velocity 1, line up and wait. Runway 36. Velocity 1, tower, fly the runway heading winds 010 at 7. Clear for takeoff, runway 36. Tower, Velocity 1, fly the runway heading. Cleared for takeoff. So my goodness is that exciting. They've also got a fantastic page on the website that delves into the details. Let's talk about where this fits into the market first of all. Now it's clear that they're aiming for the Xbox market more than the PC market. And that's not just shown by the fact that there's the Xbox logo all over it and of course the Xbox buttons clearly showing where this fits in. It's the fact that Turtle Beach haven't moved into the Flight Sim market since Microsoft Flight Simulator was secured on Xbox so they know it's coming. They haven't made it for PC off the bat. PC kind of just comes on the side, I guess. Now let's talk about price as well because that is a big thing. Now in the UK, you can pre-order it for £329, which is expensive, but I'll talk about why it's not so expensive in a minute, which comes in to around $350 US dollars or 340 ish euros. Now some of you might think that's way too expensive and if you haven't been looking at flight sims for a while, yes I probably agree with you. Bearing in mind it does come quite close to some Xbox prices, but it's got everything and this is something I'd like to point out, the market leader at the moment is Honeycomb and this product isn't designed to rival Honeycomb as you can see from it, it's not a completely authentic professional float sim experience. It's designed more for the gamer, I will admit. And the honeycomb yoke comes in for around £250. They're £100 less than this product. And the honeycomb Bravo throttle unit also comes in for around that price. But with this unit, you get everything you need. The Velocity 1 includes, as they state, everything you need to get off the ground, including the throttle quadrant with a dedicated trim wheel, which we haven't seen for a while, before, of course, the Honeycomb Bravo throttle quadrant came out. And we've got two throttle rigs, which is very interesting. Now, we've got one that's kind of designed for the airliners. I guess they're going for the 747 because they've got four uh, throttles here for the four engines. But you can use it for two and maybe you'll be able to assign it for other things. And then we've also got a more traditional Cessna TPM kind of style throttle units at the bottom there with your throttle, your propeller and mixture controls. That's something I've never seen before. That really is a first. Now you can see it does look quite plasticky overall and we'll talk about that later but it's not going for the premium feel that Honeycomb provides, it's kind of one step down but the fact you get everything might attract people towards it as opposed to Honeycomb. Now the yoke itself as they state on the website apparently has true to earth 180 degrees rotation which is a must have if you guys can remember the Cytac one only went for about 90 degrees, it kind of stopped if I remember correctly. So that's something to be excited for and it won't shy a lot of people away in that case compared to the Logitech or Cytec one. Now the modular throttle quadrant, not only can you set it up like a four engine jet, you can also set it up for general aviation aircraft and as I said earlier I did hint at it but you can replace the throttle units 
with stuff for speed brakes and flaps. They've provided a little piece for that, as you can see at the top left there. That's something I really like. We've also got 10 programmable buttons. 10 programmable buttons at the bottom is pretty impressive as well. It means you're not going to run out of space and you don't need to rely on the keyboard, or in the case of Xbox, the controller, which is massive stuff. Because let's be honest, you don't really want to be playing around with a controller when you're flying recreationally, or even if depending on how it goes professionally, although I'm quite curious to see how far you will be able to push the Xbox. Something very interesting as well as the status indicator panel located just behind the yoke. I believe Logitech or SciTech had one of these about 10 years ago now, really old, for Flow Simulator X. You can customise the colour of the ambient light, which I guess is pretty cool, although not a major factor for me, I shall admit. And you can swap between the three different panels to fine-tune the cockpit to your liking. Now, I don't know how they're going to do this. Will you be able to like pull cards out, maybe, from the looks of it? But they don't offer anything else here. No little pictures. I guess we'll get some more information down the line. But that could be something big as well, not even the honeycomb one offers that, so that could differentiate it apart. Now before I give my final thoughts, uh, let's just go through the bits we get at the bottom of the website concerning more features. And I should say, this is the bit that doesn't concern me, but it's something to bear in mind, as it's clear this is more of a gamer targeted product, as opposed to a realistic or authentic product, such as the honeycomb aeronautical yoke. You can see we've got integrated rudder controls, which I don't have a massive problem with. I personally prefer proper rudder pedals like they have in the real aircraft, but if you don't, or if you just don't want to buy them after spending $350 on something like this, then you've got that capability, and I think that's fair enough. But it does show that they're not aiming for the realistic market, and instead are aiming for the Xbox market. Now something that's pretty good is that we get those two of those little hat switches. You get one on the honeycomb yoke, so I guess it's good to have two. I'm not too sure where they'd fit in on the PC. I guess maybe drone camera or somewhere but I see more of course on the Xbox because of course on the Xbox you've got two thumbsticks and you've also got 18 additional buttons there so you can map it to almost any aircraft or every aircraft and probably fill most of the buttons up now the final thing that is probably one of the best features of this product as a whole is the flight management display. It's a full colour display, it's located right on the centre of the yoke and it is magnificent. This is the bit that I really like, I think they've done a great job here, it's going to be really exciting to see how this is. Or a chronometer like you have in the real aircraft, that's something I really like. And of course there's other capabilities there, although they don't go into too much description there. Now, Turtle Beach also say that they will work with other float simulators, not just Microsoft, um, to allow greater support than other sims like DCS and X-Plane, I imagine. That could be something good as well. But now, let's go to the final thoughts. So, my thoughts about this product is, well, it is a fantastic product by the looks of it. Although, it's clear it's not aimed at the right at the top professional float simmers. It looks very plasticky not overly sensitive, it's not made out of the aviation grade materials that the honeycomb yoke is made of, but it's perfect by the looks of it for what they're trying to achieve. The gamer, the Xbox gamer, as Microsoft Flow Simulator moves over to the console, this is going to be the bit of kit on every person's wish list because it ticks all the boxes, it means you don't have to mess around with too many cables, only one, maybe two, depending on how they do it with the uh, yoke and the throttle setup. There's plenty of other controls I have that I haven't delved into because I'd be here all day. There's such as a 3.5mm uh, jack on the side for listening to songs or whatever, I guess. And there's plenty of buttons I haven't talked about. But I am quite excited for the Velocity 1. It seems quite modular, such as the modular throttle quadrant and the ability to flip around with the status panels. I really like where they're going, actually. It's certainly exciting. It's plasticky by the looks of it. It's gamer orientated, but it doesn't mean it's not going to be fun. There's my thoughts, guys. Uh, be sure you put them down below. I'd love to hear them. And, of course, any suggestions on my channel, well, it would be great if you could put them down below. But for me today, guys, I'm going to end it here. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to get exclusive perks, consider becoming a new channel member for shout outs in all videos everyone gets them now not just my former first class members but anyway guys from me today that is all bye bye we collide we break down caving in to our doubts 
face is filled with sand.